What's up, everybody? You guys ready for Tuesday Manu? Well, I just want to say this. The enemy fears a church that is united. Can you believe that? We're going to jump into that today, so we're going to go ahead and pray. Will you join me as we pray? Lord, we want to thank you for this day. God, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for eternal life. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, speak to our hearts, that you would um, speak to us personally, because I know, speaking for myself, that I really could use a word from you. So we thank you, and you're so faithful to speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So the enemy fears unity. We've all heard the phrase divide and conquer. Well, in war, it allows the enemy to divide a people, to divide the defenses, and it leaves the people vulnerable, and therefore they're easily conquered. Well, the enemy, which is the devil, he, he uses the same tactics against the church, against us individually. He seeks to divide and to conquer our hearts because he knows a church that is not unified, a church that is not living in unity, can be easily overthrown. You know, I'm, I'm not just talking about the church on a whole, but even every single one of you that make up the body of Christ. We're all members of the church. So what we're going to be reading today is in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. So this is going to kind of break it down of, of, of the unity that, that God is looking in His people. So verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. See, I'm going to just jump in real quick. We were once outcasts, all of us. We were once so far off from God that there isn't even a number to describe the distance that that was because it says that we're once far off. That's a big, eternity is, is a big number. So um, verse 14, For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Not only was there a crazy long distance between us and God, but now it's saying that there was a wall of hostility that separated us from God because we were enemies to, to God by nature. So that wall that was there, only Jesus himself could have broken it down. By a, verse 15, By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. See, this is saying that we are reconciled or unity was restored through the cross. By the work of the cross, we now have unity. Literally, Jesus killed hostility. That's what it says, that he killed it. There's no more hostility between us and God. Therefore, there doesn't have to be hostility between us and people, between each other. So we have, you know, we have our ver vertical unity with God when He died on the cross, and then we have our horizontal unity with people. That's the cross right there. God gives us the freedom and the strength to have unity with each other. And I know the world is crazy right now. All the rioting, the violence, the killings, all the stuff that's happening. I think God's people could use a big dose of unity right now. And I do believe that God, God is like wants to use us to shine our lights in this time right now. But what is unity? Think about, think about a, a football team. There's different, there's different roles, responsibilities, different skill sets, but everybody's running towards the same direction. They're running towards the same goal, the end zone, because they're, they're in unity, but, but they're not the same. Unity is not sameness. Unity is not uniformity. Actually, unity is kind of like uniqueness, right? And so I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this. So think about this. The enemy wants to divide and conquer his people. He wants to divide your heart towards God, right? And he wants for whatever, maybe some of us have blamed God for things that go wrong in our life. Maybe we think God's out to get us or where was God when I needed him at this time, whatever it may be. And those are all valid things. But the enemy uses those things to divide our hearts towards God. And once we have division in our heart towards God, we're more susceptible to be overthrown, to be conquered. Every day people abandon their faith. Every day people walk away. Every day churches close down. The enemy is serious about dividing and conquering. Not only that, it says that Jesus killed hostility. Like we don't have to have hostility towards each other just because we're different, because our skin colors are different, different class, whatever it may be. We don't have to have 
hostility between each other. See, the enemy wants to create division in your heart be towards your brothers and sisters. He wants it for some offense or whatever difference. He's going to use that, to, and, and it's going to divide your heart. And before you know it, you're, you know, your heart could be overthrown, and that's where hatred, racism comes in. God's people should not be a people of hatred or racist, racist people. We should be loving. We, we're, we should be living in unity. We have the same goal. We're racing towards the same goal, everybody. So um, will you join me in unity? I, I really challenge you right now that you would live in unity with your brothers and sisters, regardless of uh, race, regardless of background, regardless of anything, that you would love them and be unified. All right, let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for unity. God, we ask that you would guard our hearts, that we wouldn't be divided in our hearts towards you or towards our brothers and sisters. Lord, we pray that we would embrace our differences in unity. We thank you for that. And we just ask for, for a peace upon our hearts as we go about our day and that we would be looking for opportunities um, to be united with our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen.